Welcome everyone to another video where we're looking at high round world records in Call of Duty Zombies to see how some of the best players in the world are achieving new heights in the game. In today's episode, we're taking a look at Origins, a map that personally, I'm not a big fan of, but is a fan favorite amongst the community. Before we begin the video, I just want to make a quick plug to my Patreon. Videos like these take quite a bit of time to research and create. It takes hours to edit interviews. I've gone through the revisions of the script multiple times. So if you'd like to support content like this that takes a lot longer to create, maybe consider subscribing to my Patreon where you can receive early videos, bonus content, and if you subscribe now, you can receive a remastered Die Rise sticker. It would mean a lot to me if you help support projects like these. I'm really trying to change how zombie videos are made. I want to focus on high quality videos rather than just pumping out a bunch of low quality crap. So with that said, I just want to give a quick shout out to my high tier Patreons, Clay, Martin S, Jordan L, Caden B. Thank you guys so much for supporting me and let's jump into Origins. Normally in a video like this, we jump around. We look at origins on BO2, BO3, and we see how things are done in solo as well as in co-op. Today I want to do something slightly different. I want to dive deep into Black Ops 3 Origins Solo. And that's not to say that the other records aren't important. So if you're curious, Tidy Barbecue holds the BO2 Origins Solo record at round 150. Meanwhile, the BO2 Origins Co-op record is held by Killer Chaz and Sesh. They were able to reach round 119 to set the co-op world record in BO2 Origins. But in this video, we are looking exclusively at the Black Ops 3 Solo record of 255 which was first ever set by Mark Van Leerdum. Mark was the first person to ever reach 255 on Origins, the max round on BO3, which for a while was thought to be impossible. But KXG, and this is an important note of history, has the world's fastest 255 on Origins. And when it comes to BO3 on Origins, well, you might consider Mark the expert in all of this. In fact, in researching this video, I had watched several tutorials that he created in which he details almost everything he knows about the map. Everything from how to camp, how to reach 200, how to optimally train in the late rounds. It was fascinating, and I figured I would let Mark tell the story of how he reached the world's first 255 on Origins. So I have with me right now, Mark Van Leerdum, who is number one right now on Origins. He was the first person in the world to reach 255. We're talking right now to the man who pioneered Origins, really. And I wanna get a sense of what it was like to get to 255 and give you guys a little bit of history behind the world record. So before we jump into it, Mark, why don't you give me a sense of like how much time have you put into Origins so far? So I tried to do the maths a little bit, but it's very hard to estimate because I'd say about 25 to 30% of my time on the map was probably just purely restarts for a good game and a good setup. But in terms of what I would guess is probably 1500 to 2000 hours in total now. Wow. And uh, I have played Origins after the 255 as well, but not a lot. So most of it is indeed before I got that round. Well, you, when you put that many hours into it, that's almost, it almost feels like a full-time job. So why don't you give us a sense of the journey? I know you would hit 221, you would hit 253, two, then eventually you got 255. What was that road like? So it all started when Chronicles actually released. It was kind of a meme back then, but I just decided, you know, why don't I just try and go for the first 200 on the map? It wasn't possible on Black Ops 2. So I was like, you know, let's just go for it on, on BO3 instead. Why not? At first, I failed a bunch of times early on in the game, and I took a break, and then I came back to the strategy, which was the main strategy back then, camping in the fire tunnel and training in the crazy place, a very slow strategy. I just started grinding this, and I eventually ended up getting 201, which was the first 200 on the map. And after that, I actually wanted to quit at first. That was my main goal at first, and I thought I would just leave it there because I didn't want to get stuck on that map forever and grind it until, you know, <laughs> it was completely maxed out. But mm -hmm. that, that quickly changed and I ended up coming back when the record was about 217, I'm pretty sure. So I played a 221 game to reset in the excavation site, which was also the world record back then. 
And I kind of look at this now as kind of like a practice game in excavation. I didn't care about how fast I played. I didn't care about how many downs I had. I just wanted to make sure that I had to get to reset because that's all I needed back then. All I needed was to play a game out to reset. I knew I would get the record if I just did that. Looking back on it now, it was obviously very slow and I had a lot of downs, but at the time I didn't care. I knew that that was all was necessary. So after that, literally two days afterwards, Scientifu60, the guy who had the 217, ended up beating me. Uh, he was on 200 the moment I got 218, which was the new record back then. So, <laughs> so you knew he was right on your tail. I didn't at the time. I didn't. Uh -oh. He was recording off stream. He literally started restreaming his new game as soon as my round switched to 218. So he was kind of trolling me back then. But that game ended up being a 229 flawless, which was kind of like the first good reset game on the map. And then about a month later, I started another game up and I basically beat him on my first attempt because I managed to scrape off about an hour of game time in the first 130 rounds. And I basically just kept that hour ahead of him the whole game. This game was not without struggle because he had told me about some weird ass glitch that happens in the way that he ran the strategy. So basically what he did, he would do a specific cutback on the right side of the room. I don't know how to explain this really, but... Is this when, as you're going towards the boxes, you turn your body to the right? Yes. Is this what you're yes. talking about? Exactly that. It's literally exactly mm -hmm. that. Now, if you do this too often, you actually end up getting stuck. It makes no sense, but there's a limited amount of turning space you have in zombies. It's very high, but I actually had that happen to me on 212. I was unable to look left or right because I'd hit that point where I was unable to turn right anymore. And that's the glitch that Scientifu ended up having in his 217, and he ended his game back then because he didn't know how to fix it. And so he played again in the 229, and he told me that he somehow managed to fix it, but he didn't know how. So I was just going in completely unaware of how to actually fix this. I ended up fixing it somehow mid-round. I was able to somehow get out of excavation without even being able to look in a certain direction, so that was quite scary. I ended up finding out that if you just turn in the opposite direction, you can actually fix it. So for example, if you get stuck, you do one 360 to the left, you can do one to the right before you get stuck again. It's a kind of a weird thing that happens. People only found out like a year and a half later on Nuketown, Chris Voldage played a game to somewhere in the 90s, I'm not exactly sure, but he ended up getting the same issue and he didn't know how to fix it at the time either and ended his game on that. Only after that is when people started testing why this happened and it is indeed just a amount of time that you can look in a certain direction. So after this, we just had to switch to facing the zombies and no longer doing that cutback, which was a little bit painful for the shield. Uh, you got hit your shield more, you had to do more shield runs, but eventually we ended up perfecting it this way. Has this been an issue that other players have run into on other maps, or has it mostly been an Origins thing and maybe like Nuketown for Chris? As far as I know, this me and Scientifu were the first two to get it, and that was only on Origins and the other was indeed Newtown. Those are the only three cases I know of it happening. But that's mainly because most strategies don't involve you to do a consistent cutback to a certain direction. So basically, after I got unstuck, I got stuck again because I didn't know what caused it in the first place. And then eventually I just tried saving a zombie at the end of the round and just messing around with it a little bit. Then I found out I tried to do like multiple 360s to the left. I would do three and I would be able to do three to the right before I got stuck again. So I ended up just deciding I was just going to wait with the last zombie for like five minutes and just do 360s to the left for like five minutes. Did you complete the round like that? No, I mean, I had to face the zombies at all times. I knew that I was not able to turn the wrong, the right way because otherwise I would get stuck again. So yeah. I just had to make sure I was facing them at all times mm -hmm. and then save a zombie and then try and get a little bit more room so I could turn to the right a little bit more if I needed to later in the game. Wh which run was this upon? This was the 230 world record. I beat Scientifu by one round. After this, it was kind of a dead period on Origins. But about five months later, someone who was actually just playing for a 200 plus game, he was about two hours behind me in game time, he ended up beating me because something else had changed on BO3 in general that I didn't know yet back then. A patch actually got rid of one of the two resets on the game. So the old reset on BO3 was the CE error. This was the same on every map. It was about 68 to 72 hours as far as we knew. But a patch that came out 
roughly around June of 2018, completely got rid of this. And it made every single map have a different reset again. But on Origins, the actual reset, as far as we know now, I want to say 90 and 95 hours. There's only been two timed resets on the map, and they've both been in the 91 hour range. But again, my 255 was 93 and a half hours, so I was already two hours past that. So the time frame really could be anything above 90 hours. So I guess this patch is kind of what opened up the door for you to blow past 230. Yes, the original max we thought was about 235, 236, and after that we thought it was going to be really hard to beat, or you'd have to train or find a faster place to train, like either one of the generators 2 or 3 or 4. We never really came up with any of those strategies, and uh, we didn't have to when this patch came out. <laughs> so, uh, at least at this point now you're at 230. Mm -hmm. Was your next game the 253? My next game was the 253, yes. This was about seven months later. I went on holiday as soon as Sign Tufu got a 241. So I came back and I was like, well, surely the only right thing to do is go for 255 now that this reset is gone. And I instantly started up a game, played the 253, and I knew that the black screen was somewhere. I should have been expecting it more because Origins is quite a big map with a lot of entities on it, so the reset was obviously going to be a bit lower than something like Nact, which is like 300 hours, ridiculously high. So it made sense why the reset was about 90 hours, but that didn't make the 253 black screen any less annoying. <laughs> I could imagine. And so you black screen a 253, that's just got to be heartbreaking at that point, right? Yeah, I didn't just black screen on 253. There was only minutes left in that round, too. Oh, so you were right at the door. I was right at the you know the last round where it was no longer a countdown in rounds, but just you know an hour and 12 minutes left to the game, and I knew it was over. But I guess it wasn't meant to be <laughs> that game. So how much time did you put in between your 253 and your 255? Because I know in your commentary when you talked about your 253 game, you were saying, like, I'm, I'm doing this for me. We're going to get it done. Did you give yourself a break or did you jump right back in? So I gave myself about a two week break and uh, then I decided that, well, the only main focus I should have is just making sure that I don't error, making sure I don't black screen. And uh, even though I didn't, I had no clue how to prolong the error, I just decided I was going to try whatever I could. So my main thought back then was I left the gramophone in the fire tunnel after 161 in my 253 game. Obviously, the gramophone makes a portal. That's a lot of entities, and it was there for 75 hours of the game. So I was like, I need to pick that up at the end of round 161 when I'm changing perks and set up to train for the rest of the game. So I decided to pick that up, as well as the fire staff parts. And I'm pretty sure I picked up like a wind staff part on like 196 or something. But that's really all I tried to do to prolong the error. But another very big glitch in Origins has to do with the generator zombies. If you let them take all of your generators, they'll despawn, drop the max ammo. But what this actually does is it takes away five spots of zombies on the map, which means you can no longer have 24 zombies at once on the map. It is actually limited at 19 until you get or should have had your next generator zombie round. And this actually ended up costing me over an hour in my 255 game. I had it on six different rounds above 200. And especially when training, this just takes away a whole bunch of time. It actually adds a full 10 minutes to a round if this happens to you above 220. So you want to make sure that you always kill these guys, even if they're on the last generator. It'll make sure that this glitch doesn't happen. So you play this game, you're dropping as many entities as you can, and then you finally get to 255. How did that feel? That 255 was honestly just the, the biggest relief ever because that round was just nerve wracking. I knew that I was past my previous error time, so I knew it was just around the corner. It could literally pop up whenever it wanted to, but luckily it didn't. And even though I was an hour and a half past my error time at, the po at this point, I still so somehow managed to get the 255. Nice. So where can people find you? So I am on YouTube, uh, Mark van Leerdam. Uh, I don't have a really consistent upload schedule, but I try to post as much as I can and stream every now and then. And uh, I'll, I'll be, I'll, every time I stream, I'll be commentating live uh, while playing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mark. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. No problem. 
That, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of the first ever 255 on Origins. It's a story of heartbreak, it's a story of glitches, and ultimately a story of triumph. That's how we got here, but how was it done specifically? Well, in the early game, Mark would try to fly through the early rounds as fast as possible. This would require a lot of resets. He would want round 5 snow so that he can get the ice staffs as fast as possible. He wanted the shield part in the fire tunnel so that he can get that going early. He also wanted the reset so that he got Widow's Wine from his first Wonderfizz machine spin. This way he can use it in tandem with Swordflay during the airstrike steps. Now none of this is absolutely necessary if you want to make a 255 run on Origins, but Mark would like to do it so that he could play the early rounds as fast as possible. Once he got the RNG to go his way, his early round strategy was to simply camp in the fire staff tunnel. If we're going to put it simply, he made use of dead wire and a turn weapon as well as the ice staff to camp at the bottom of this tunnel that leads you to fire staff. By maintaining a blizzard with the ice staff, he could kill a majority of the zombies. Meanwhile, the alternate ammo type would assist him in killing the zombies as fast as possible. One of the ways he was able to camp down here is by maximizing his max ammo. Of course, gobble guns like Alchemical are a massive boost to regain ammo, but he'd also regain ammo by leaving three generators off. Then, when he needed a max ammo, he'd simply turn one on. This would trigger an ancient zombies to spawn, and then he could take their max ammo. Lastly, he'd also maximize his max ammo by turning off carpenters, death machines, and fire sails. He'd make sure there were no carpenters by running specific routes that would keep windows shut at all times. He would also turn off fire sails by simply never moving the box. And what this would do is remove those drops from the drop cycle thus creating less drops that you can receive at one given time and maximizing his odds of receiving a max ammo. And if all of that wasn't enough, when he did run out of ammo, he would simply just train at the bottom of excavation until he received a max ammo. Once he did, he was back to camping. This is a relatively effective strategy camping down here. However, it doesn't always work. You can camp here for most rounds up to 162, but for some reason, because of how the zombie's health works, you will not be able to kill the zombies with the ice staff on these specific rounds. It's hard to say exactly what causes this, but what we know for certain is that after round 112, for some reason, the zombies will turn frozen from the ice staff if you can manage to damage them before they enter the blizzard. Then they're insta-killable, but you and Solo just don't have enough time to switch weapons back and forth. So the strategy breaks down and it stops being viable during these rounds that Mark referred to as basically frozen rounds. During these frozen rounds, you unfortunately have to just go train in excavation or find another way to survive until the next round when the strategy can then become viable. This is something that you can pull off in co-op because you have a partner who can kill the zombies rather than you having to switch weapons, but it unfortunately just breaks down in solo. So that's the early game strategy on Origins. You're going to do this for the first 160 rounds, and then at round 162, things start to switch up with a new strategy. And this strategy will run you all the way to 255. If you think you're out of the woods though, this is when the game really starts to get long. The strategy he is doing is to train at the bottom of excavation. And at this point you'll drop the ice staff because it's no longer an effective way to kill the zombies, but instead you'll use mule kick and run three alternate ammo type guns, dead wire, turned, and fireworks. The training strategy that you'll see Mark run could be described as a figure eight at the bottom of excavation, and while it looks simple to run, it's actually quite involved. Mark has a very specific movement pattern, and it's all in an effort to maintain his shield and reduce the damage that he receives. After all, you're in a tight space, so it's pretty easy to get swiped by the zombies. And how he's moving is important. For example, you'll see here he turns right instead of turning left to face his shield towards the box. What this is actually doing is better protecting his shield so that the zombies don't swipe it as he's turning. Mark explains his movement in detail in one of his guides on his channel that I'll have linked in the description. 
In this video, he details that all of the cuts and turns he makes during the strategy in slow motion, it's really well done, an excellent video. Another thing to be aware is that you need to be careful though how many times you're making this turn because as Mark had explained earlier, you can run into the glitch where you actually run out of turning space and lock your movement. So you have these two conflicting principles going on and it gets difficult as you're training in this tight space. So you might be able to do it for a while, but you probably can't do it all the way up to 255 and then you have to start cutting in ways that damage your shield more often then you have to go make more shield runs. It's a catch-22. Another thing to be aware of is the fact that you need to be careful when you're turning your back towards the wind staff pedestal. And this is because it's easy to get stuck on it and go down. Mark told me he's seen countless people do it as well as himself. It's a really simple mistake to make. So it's something you always have to be aware of and make sure you don't get stuck on the wind staff pedestal. That's the movement when you're down here. When it comes to killing zombies, well, like most late round DO3 strategies, you're relying on alternate ammo types. Naturally, your goal is to maintain a turn zombie so that it's killing a large amount of zombies continuously, but the bulk of your kills are going to be done with dead wire. You'll also occasionally try to get fireworks to kill the zombies as well. Your dead wire weapon should be the Tommy gun because it's the one you're going to use the most and it's the closest to you. Keep in mind though that running and grabbing ammo is not a simple task. When getting ammo, it's essential that you run up and to the right rather than to the left. Running to the left is almost guaranteed to get you pinned down by a zombie and then potentially going down, but if you run to the right, it's a much safer route to run. You'll also need to occasionally get ammo for your turned weapon and your fireworks weapon. This process is a little bit more involved. Mark outlines this whole process in a video for getting ammo quite thoroughly that I recommend you check out. That guide is also linked in the description, but the general path you'll be able to see here and he will grab his ammo for the M8 and then grab ammo for the KN44. The M8 is his turned weapon and the KN44 is his fireworks weapon. That is the training strategy and how Mark was able to kill the zombies into the late game. Another thing you might be wondering is, well, what's up with the Panzer? Everybody's favorite boss in zombies. In the early game, while he has a staff, he can simply kill the, kill the Panzer by using the butt of his staff. This kills him quite quickly if you can pull off two quick shots in succession. In the late game, though, he does something interesting, something I don't think anybody would have expected. The Panzer's health seems to break in the late game. It's really low, and as a result, he's able to just take the Panzer out of excavation and then kill the Panzer with two trip mines. It's as simple as that. We're not sure what's going on to make the Panzer's health a break, but it's one of those weird quirks of Origins late game BO3. Anyway, in summary, that's how Mark was able to reach 255 on Origins. The early game was spent camping in the fire staff tunnel and then he grinded at the bottom of excavation all the way to 255 to set history and become the first person to ever reach 255 and max out origins on BO3. One last thing I want to leave you with is some perspective on how long this game takes. In terms of time, the first 16 to 17 hours will be spent camping in the fire staff tunnel. This will take you to round 162-163. And then you will spend about 40 hours of your total game reaching round 200. Now you're not even halfway. As far as time's concerned, you won't even reach the halfway point in this game until round 209. And then you have about, once you reach 200, 50 hours between 200 and 255 before you can finally max out this map. We're talking a 90 hour run here. It's a massive grind after 200. And Shout out to KXG as well as Mark for having the dedication to grind the hell out of this map. That, ladies and gentlemen, is going to wrap up this video. Please do go check out Mark's channel. A link is in the description. He has some really good content and guides on Origins. In addition to that, he's currently doing Cold War Zombie speed runs right now, and I think any Zombies fan would enjoy this content. So check out his channel. A link is in the description as well as links to his clips and guides. On that note, I lastly want to give a massive thank you to my patrons, Clay, Martin S, Jordan L, and Caden B for supporting my Patreon. If you'd like to support more videos like this and are enjoying this world record content, please consider joining my Patreon. A link is in the description. There you can find exclusive content such as my full 25 minute long interview with Mark. 
that is in the description what you heard in the video was just about a 10 minute segment but the full thing is in my patreon in addition to that new patrons will be receiving remastered die rise stickers i'm gonna go thank you guys for supporting the channel have a wonderful day and bye